So lateral epicondylitis can be a extremely frustrating injury. So it's one that you're going to have to have some patience with. And it's kind of counterintuitive, but for kind of the tendon issues, we want to load the tendon and put it through a little bit of stress. But at the same time, with the musculature, go and try and reduce as much tension and stress on that as possible. And so we'll first talk about the kind of the rehab aspect of it and then some of the soft tissue work, show you a couple things that you can try and hopefully get this thing calmed down. So ultimately, depending on where you're at in the process of how fired up it is, we'll typically start with isometrics, meaning we're trying to not move um, against resistance and keep everything set. We'll hold these for about five seconds. Typically, I say start with sets of like three by five reps. See how you respond. Five to six irritation doesn't feel great can be acceptable. You just don't want to make sure that it's too much. So in essence, you can see on where you do get the most inner irritation with your um, flexion of your wrist as we're trying to address the extensors. So if you start down here, you can use your hand and basically you're just trying to fire up against that hand, hold for five seconds and relax. Repeat that for five reps, take a little break if you need to in between, but you're trying to load that tendon. You could try different angles. So again, getting up a little bit higher, same thing, going, pressing through there. Start off, three sets, five reps, hold for five seconds. You can play with those numbers, but I wouldn't really need to see increased reps above 10 or time holding anywhere over seven to 10 seconds. If you're starting to get to those numbers, we progress to the next one, which are eccentric loading. So we're trying to contract back against the weight or the resistance while we're lengthening the muscle. So you'll start up here with that all engaged and then you're gonna press down and try and resist against it. Again, going across a five second count to get that tendon to load. Then start back up, same thing, pressing down, again, going for the load there. You could try and do it with TheraBand or something, some sort of band where you're here if you need somebody to help you with it, holding there and pulling down against it. But again, start with the isometrics and then move your way over to the eccentrics. Again, I would start off three sets, five for about five seconds on that down as you're going through. Again, these will irritate that tendon. That's the goal. We're trying to load it through resistance that's been found to be the best way to deal with tendinopathy. So that's where we're going to want to start. When we talk about soft tissue work, we're going to try and avoid going too hard right on where those tendons come across and where a lot of that pain typically is. If that area is really fired up, an ice cup massage can be really good. I'll show you a couple other little things. We'll do the voodoo band here in a second. But we don't necessarily want to go too hard mashing on that area because we can just end up pissing it off. But we can work on all the musculature coming down. So if this is a lacrosse ball, you could use a tennis ball, racquetball to start, baseball works too. But you can start by just doing some rolling over those extensors. You want to kind of have your hand in neutral, find a spot, do some back and forth, side to side, even go around in circles trying to work through there. Uh, we can do a pin and stretch technique where you're kind of starting with it extended. To shorten the muscle, find an area that's tender, hold that ball in place, and then work through range of motion. That can help loosen up some of those areas. Just focus them through there. Again, we're working on all the tight areas we find down in the musculature, not necessarily where we're having the most pain around the tendon because that can get super irritating and end up causing us more of a delay in the healing process, which is obviously counterintuitive. So we can go through and do a bunch of of those to help loosen up there. I would always start my soft tissue work before any stretching, which we can just focus on basic kind of elbow stretching, which you may have already started with, but I like to do soft tissue work beforehand. So we go and we kind of hopefully loosen some areas up and then move that muscle through that range of motion. As you start getting feeling a little bit better around the elbow, you can do kind of a tack and twist technique uh, to help loosen up some areas around there. It might be better with like a racquetball because it's got a little more tack to it. Basically, you're kind of setting in and then just doing some rotation of that tissue. Not a ton of pressure, but just kind of tacking in and then doing a little bit of rotation going in both directions. It's just trying to get a shearing force across that tissue to help loosen that up. So that'd be a place to start there. 
last one. This is the Buddha band. We'll have a link in the description uh, if you wanted to try and purchase one. It is literally just a thick rubber band. Uh, have to be careful with these. You're in essence wrapping on a tourniquet, so you want to be a little careful in how long you're doing it. Um, if at any point things start tingling, going numb, changing color, take it off, start over. But the goal is to wrap on tight. Uh, they call it the Voodoo Band because it's compression, shearing, doing all this at the same time, and we can't really tell which one may be benefiting it, but it's really good for soft tissue work around the joints. Having somebody help you with this can be useful uh, just to get it started, but in essence, we'll want to get it pinned down somehow and get it started wrapping around, but enough that we can get it going so I'm going to start really loose till we can get an overlap and then we can start actually getting some tension on that and you want to overlap the band by about half to a third around so it, you don't leave any gaps because that can lead to pinching but then in essence we're just going to wrap over the elbow so over that area again having somebody wrap this on for you can make life a little bit easier than doing it yourself. But we'll get that on. And tuck that underneath. I would maybe start up a little bit more, go up a little higher, but we did cover everything, so we should be good to get started. Get this tucked under. And then basically we're just going through, working through all the ranges of motion within the elbow. So we're just moving around, flexing, extending, getting all of that tissue that's there, working through, finding areas that are tight, wrapping around, really just getting things to try and loosen up. Again, only going, hand starts to go numb a little bit. We take it off, recycle it over, and rewrap, and we can do that a couple times, you know, working 30 seconds to a minute on all those things. Again, I'd maybe start up just a little bit higher to get a little bit further up my elbow, but big thing is we want to make sure we're getting across that insertion point. Again, this is a frustrating injury. It, it's really not a fun one for anybody to deal with, you or whoever you're seeing. But these are where we'd start to try and get things loosened up. You can try the compression bands, uh, the tennis elbow bands. Those can help because they just create a little bit of a different insertion angle for that tendon so it takes a little bit of the load off through that compression so that is always a good option uh, and is very useful for some people so uh, if you have questions reach out let us know uh, we can try and help walk you through or answer them but these are the basics that we start with with tennis elbow